Why don't we have pellets call dumber than a box of rock? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. A bird in the hand is worth two in the butt. Get out of here. And also, Colourpop, you bring it in. You listen to me. You take any of those ideas and make a pallet out of it, I will hunt you down like a tiger's in the Serengeti if you don't give me my cut. <laughs> hey, you guys. So I hope, I hope you like the new setup. I'm trying something new. This is cool for me. Hope it's cool for you. But today we are doing part two in my five brands I fill in the blank. So the last video I did was five brands I don't buy from anymore, which meant brands that I bought from at some point but have since completely stopped. These are all brands that no matter how hyped up they are or how popular they get or what they release, I just have no interest in them and I can't be the only one. So these brands either don't interest me, bore me, or in some cases flat out confuse me. But first, I just want to make something very clear. Spare me the vitriol in the comment section of this video of your incessant need to pledge allegiance to a brand and the inanimate objects that they produce. This is just my personal opinion from my personal experience. It's all in good fun and I'm sure there's brands that I absolutely love that tons of people probably have no interest in either. But I am interested in hearing what your version of this list is. So brands you've never wanted to try, leave them down below because I want to know. Also make sure you check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. Come hang with me on Patreon. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell if you are not new around here hey what's up how's your mom and him and uh yeah let's just get started so the first brand on my list that I have no interest in is milk makeup so I flat out do not get all the hype around this brand and I am also aware that there's tons of products in this line that people are just die hard devoted to I for example have heard so much about the Kush mascara apparently that stuff is legit and I also remember when people like ranted and raved about that blur stick which I did try and in my opinion really wasn't anything special I mean at best it was just like every other blurring pore minimizing primer I had ever tried and at worst it kind of did nothing at all this uh this brand is like very vibey to me it feels kind of it's not just makeup it's a lifestyle it's like that cool girl who doesn't actually care about any of this stuff but will still spend almost thirty dollars for concealer to get that point across so there's definitely like entire product lines entire product categories that are just too cool for me. I'm aware of that. This is one of them. Because to me, honestly, I think they are really getting by on these sticks. I mean, answer me this, riddle me this. If they did not have these sticks, how would this brand be any different than any other brand that's out there right now? And speaking of these sticks, what kind of 2001 shit is this anyways? <laughs> it's like very spaceship kind of makeup to me like captain all systems are set to slay is there like some science or something out there that says that makeup products perform better if they're in stick form i also kind of think it's gross to think of spreading a stick on your face day in and day out like that has got to be a breeding ground for bacteria and dirt and oil just to build up on top of it which is particularly interesting to me considering some of these items are skincare. There are 26, 26 of these sticks, dude. We got stick primers, stick face masks, stick cleansers, stick color product. And now we also have a, a stick melatonin product. Come on y'all, melatonin in our skincare, we're doing that now. Apparently some studies have been done showing that melatonin does kind of act like an antioxidant in our skincare, not unlike vitamin C. But it feels like the goal here is to create a nighttime uh, line within milk. And honestly, in terms of your daytime and your nighttime skincare routine, there's really not a whole lot of differences with the exception of the fact that your daytime skincare probably will have SPF in it and your nighttime skincare will not. And then maybe, maybe, your nighttime skincare might be more emollient or thicker versus your daytime, but that's not even true for everyone. So it just kind of feels like milk makeup is trying to create a solution to a problem that nobody really has. Also stamps. What's funny about these stamps is I'm finding out that they're not even the only brand that is doing this, but I'm just, once again, not cool enough for this shit. Now, excuse me while I go sort my pills for the week and chug some Metamucil. Okay, so this is category two and three and it's KKW Beauty and Kylie Cosmetics. And this one, this part of the video, these brands, 
almost too easy for me to give you a myriad reasons why I would no, never be interested in them, really. But let me say this really quick, okay? I actually like Kim. I mean, I like Kim's, I like the idea of Kim. There are things about her that I appreciate and it's not her physical appearance, although I think that plays hugely into her business plan. What I think it is, is perhaps her ability to take something that many people have tried to do, or not even tried to do, have done, which is be on a reality show, and been the most successful person at it. Like, for all everybody wants to sit around and say that they're famous for nothing, hate them or love them, they're doing something different because there's so many reality TV shows on and none of them, not one person has reached this level of sustained fame and fortune and success. I'm also really stoked about the prison reform, her taking the bar exam, like I low key, not even low key, high key wish that Kim taking her time and energy and dedicating it to something bigger than herself and also pursuing higher education would be a trend that young girls would replicate similar to the way they replicate I don't know, Brazilian butt lifts, but I'm not holding my breath for that. I do not own a single Kim Kardashian anything and I never will. But as I go in on her brand, please understand that this is not a reflection of my opinion of her necessarily. This is just product specific. Both of these lines are stupid. I'm sorry, I'm not sorry, no I'm not. From time to time on my channel, I have done videos where I will react to new makeup releases and I tend to put them in a good, bad, or ugly category. And I could be mistaken, but I think every single time I've done that, either Kim or Kylie's line has ended up on there and it's gone into the bad or the ugly category because I am just not checking for this at all. And I know I ask this question all the time in these kind of videos, but I mean this with every letter of every syllable of every word. Who is buying this? For shits and gigs the other day, I decided to log on to www.youtube.com and conduct a little field test. I wanted to get a sense on how these products were ranking through about 10 different people's best of beauty for 2019. So I searched best beauty products of 2019 and I randomly picked 10 different videos. Some of the videos were from super popular influencers, some were from people who had smaller channels, some were from people I've never heard of before, and some were from people I am peripherally aware of. But I think it was a pretty good mix bad mixed bag of creators and uh out of those 10 only two mentioned a single one of their products and of those two they were both lip products and last i checked both of these girls had massive lines that were far 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 bigger than just the lip products now, I'm not trying to imply that the only opinion that is relevant or that matters is that of beauty gurus because I know there's tons of other people out there who buy makeup who have nothing to do with the beauty community and I think that's my point. I think that is who is keeping this business going. I saw KKW, for example, for the first time in person in Ulta. I think it was at the very end of last year. And to say that I was underwhelmed is to say the Pacific Ocean is damp. Plus, I call malarkey. If you go on Kim Kardashian West Beauty, the website, and you click on the bestseller tab, and you click on the Allure Best of Beauty 2017 winner, Sure Jan, the highlight and contour six, uh, they want me to believe, and I'm looking at it right now, that of 98 reviews left for this product, 80, 80 of them are five star. And that only 13 of those 98 are three stars and below. My ass, my ass. On Ulta.com, there are 157 reviews total for this exact same product. 101 of those views are three stars and below. And 56 are four and above. It's a conspiracy with a K. People are just like, way too quick to hand their money over to these women. And like I said, I kinda like Kim, kinda, but like she, she didn't get one red cent out of me, not one. Y'all remember when uh, Kim launched her perfume line a couple of years ago and it sold out without people even having to smell it? Y'all give these women way too much credit. Speaking of people getting way too much credit, don't even get me started on Kylie. Last year, there was a video that went viral everywhere of Kylie Jenner singing rise and shine to her little kid. And that shit went bonkers on the internet. People lost their minds. Beethoven composed five of his greatest 
sonatas when he was almost completely deaf. Where has it all gone so wrong? It just makes me feel like the bar is so low. <laughs> if Kylie shows any amount of personality or talent or ability at all, like, oh Lord, take us now, we're ready. <sighs> People out here trying to clean out our oceans, fight for the rights of minorities and the LGBTQ community. Stop us from facing cataclysmic environmental deterioration. And this, this is what we get gassed up for. Kylie's stuff seems way better rated on Ulta. Her reviews and the specs that she's getting on her website versus the reviews and the specs that she's getting on Ulta are comparable. It's not this glaring discrepancy that KKW Beauty is trying to sell us on. But I, I sometimes think that that's got more to do with the target demographic for Kylie's products. Like I think if you're buying a Kylie Jenner product, you're, you're, expectations might just be a little low. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I own one Kylie Jenner product. It is one of her lip kits. I bought it with my daughter. It was like, just when we're trying to be cute. And uh, yeah, I'll never buy anything else again. Like I just could care less. This stuff is overpriced and I don't think it's worth what she charges for it whatsoever. It's just her name that you're paying for. But Kylie stuff in particular has always kind of looked to me like really expensive Claire's makeup. I cannot imagine a scenario where anything in Kylie's line is better formulated, performs better. It's certainly not more cost effective than any other item in the same category. Which like whatever dude, like who cares what I think? She can do whatever the hell she wants. She's obviously killing it. But this video is about me, in my opinion. I could go on about the reasons <laughs> that I think this, both of these lines are just probably not the place I would spend my beauty budget at all. But I gotta move on because I don't want to sound like a bitter Betty at this point. And while I assure you that is not the case, I also don't want my message to get lost in the valid sassy ass points I'm making right now. But long story short, I'm not checking for any of this mess. Number four is ColourPop. And this list is already tiring me out. I can't wait for the next video in this series that I'm filming you guys. It's gonna be about brands I am excited about and I do like because I know there's gonna be people in the down bar who are gonna be like, well, what kind of stuff do you like? Like, I do like stuff, but look at the title of the video. It's not what this is about. But yeah, ColourPop, no. No, nope, not a ColourPop person. But uh, full disclosure, I have purchased from ColourPop. It was a long time ago. It was when I didn't know any better and the liquid lipstick craze had just started and I bought like, God, I don't know, maybe 10, 11 of their liquid lipsticks. Ugh, man, like those things were really poor, really poorly formulated. I, I think that there were some that performed better than others. Don't get me wrong, but I uh, definitely got what I paid for and I'll never buy another liquid lipstick from them again. ColourPop, I believe, is probably the pioneer, like the leader of this fast beauty thing that we've been seeing over the past couple of years. I think it's flat out environmentally irresponsible. I think that they're like kind of students of the throw shit at the wall and see what sticks way of doing business. Um, but this is just Forever 21 for your face. I feel the same way about ColourPop that I feel about a toddler screaming in the corner because you won't let it eat cat food. We need to ignore this so that it stops. So I was trying really hard to get a handle on how many ColourPop palettes have come out in the past couple of years because it's something every time I look at trend mood, hot fire makeup, whatever, always some ColourPop palettes everywhere. And the only number I could come up with based off of only what's on their website at this very moment, at the moment of me recording this, there are 46 eyeshadow palettes on that friggin' website right now. And I don't even know necessarily if that is representative of what they've been doing over the past 24 to 36 months. It's just what's on there right now. ColourPop has also recently become a funnel for other businesses to make money through licensing deals. That's pretty apparent to me through things like the Disney collection and Sailor Moon. But they also have the nerve to make eyeshadow palettes around uh, common everyday phrases that people say, like uh, truly, madly, deeply, for example, like somewhere Savage Garden is rolling over in their metaphorical grave. But we also have all that whatever yes please give it to me straight it's all good like let's just take it a step further why don't we have palettes called dumber than a box of rocks speak of the devil we'll cross that bridge when we get to it a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush the best thing since sliced bread like get out of here and also ColourPop, you bring it in you listen to me 
you take any of those ideas and make a palette out of it, I will hunt you down like a tiger's in the Serengeti if you don't give me my cut. <laughs> Get out of here with that mess. So on top of that, looking down at my notes, they have roughly 275 different lip products, 108 different cheek products, and not including their palette collection, they also have another 178 eye products. I will say this, I am hardcore interested in these eyeliners and I'll tell you why. If, if ColourPop's whole gig is like, you don't have to spend a lot of money to look great, then this type of a product, especially if it performs as well as it seems like it does, would make sense for me in that capacity. Because I, at this moment, am in a position where I need to get rid of almost all of my eyeliners and my liquid and cream eyeshadows because they've expired. So this looks great to me because it is everything I'm looking for at a reasonable price point and that price point is even more important to me around this type of a product because the shelf life of items like this is so short. But out of the roughly 700 products on their website, this is literally the only thing I saw that was interesting, cool, well thought out, and the only thing that seemed worth the small amount of money that they're asking for, because I don't care how cheap something is that doesn't make it worth buying. And on top of that, their whole thing of like, you don't have to spend a mint to look great, like, y'all ain't fooling me for a minute, horse apples, because the reason your line is so massive is you know good and damn well that those price points are gonna encourage people to buy so much more from you. And doing that, buying a crap ton more of something that's less expensive, ultimately doesn't stop or slow down needless spending around beauty. And then on top of everything else, it will all end up in a landfill because most people, unless you're a professional, hardworking makeup artist, are not gonna go through even a, a, even a portion of the amount of stuff that they are buying from this website. They, like I said, 700 items in their line. And that's not even counting fourth ray and soul, whatever that is. I am just not here for this. No, really I'm not. Um, with the exception of those eyeliners, if they ever come back in, back in stock, I will never purchase anything from ColourPop ever again. I promise. So the last brand we're gonna talk about today is Glossier. Now, if I'm too old or not cool enough for milk makeup, then I am too ugly for Glossier. Not like for the world, okay, for Glossier, because Glossier is one step away from doing nothing at all. It's a bunch of tints and washes of color, very, I just woke up like this, and like, I need a lot more help than that. But I'm also willing to bet that I am in probably not the target audience for this brand either. That is not to say that there is nothing in this line that I have like never been interested in because there's been a couple of times where I have filled up an online cart of their products. It's been the bomb.com I liked the idea of, I was interested in the cloud paint, the boy brow and the generation G matte lip balm. Cause I could see, I could see a use for these. Like if I am literally needing to throw something on my face to look somewhat representable as quickly as possible, look as natural and effortless as humanly possible, that these products would give me that that result, that effect. And that's like ultimately what this entire line is for and like what it's all about. It's like while the Morphe's and the Jeffries of the world are trying to sell us like the tackiest, just bulkiest, more pigmented, uh, try hard stuff on the market, Glossier comes in and says, Hey girl, you're fine just the way you are. I mean, you will be fine just the way you are when you buy our $30 flesh colored water product. But after that, it's all good girl. People who love Glossier love Glossier. Do they have a name? They should call themselves like the Gloss Bombs or something. <laughs> Glossier, in my opinion, is one of the brands on the market today who has nailed their branding and their marketing in a way that like should be studied. They know who their customer is. They know what she wants. They know how to advertise to her. And they also know how to package it perfectly. They even got those names down, man. Like Future Dude, Skywash, Cloud Paint, Halo Scope. These literally sound like female anime superheroes, don't they? <laughs> I could know not one thing about this brand and you could say those names to me and I would know immediately not only what they are, but what their, um, what their effect is, what their cloud paint, like I know immediately that means a watercolor, like puffy, lived in, natural, rosy 
cheek. I know ex immediately what that product is going to give me. And yet, I do doubt that I will ever actually pick any of this up because I have most of the stuff I need already to create, if you will, these exact kind of products. I would really just have to apply things I already own a little bit differently or maybe mix them with other things to make them a little bit softer. But for me at this point in my makeup journey, like that's this is probably not something that like i said in the beginning is even like for me so this stuff truly seems like real people makeup just on like stark contrast to like color pops frenetic jesse spano on nose beard way of doing things and i do think that's kind of awesome and smart because we so often think of the beauty industry and the community as for for us in that like the high buyers the ones who want the most the ones who want to slay and like that's not true there's tons of other real women out there who just need a little something to get the job done and that's all they're interested in insert glossier but even if i can sit back and kind of marvel at what they've built and what they've done and be completely aware of the fact that their shit supposedly is bomb i still haven't bought any of it but i will say that out of all the other brands we talked about today uh this is the only one that I would kind of have a never say never attitude towards. So stay tuned. All right, you guys, I could easily, easily do a part two of this series because as I was trying to like gather my notes and get my list together, I just kept coming across brand after brand after brand that I realized I keep hearing about and yet don't own any of it for one reason or the other. So definitely let me know if you want to see a part two of that. And like I said before, make sure you are subscribed and or stay tuned for the next installment in the series where I will tell you guys five brands that I always buy from and probably always will. Once again, I want to know the brands that you have never been interested in and why. In the last video I did, I asked you guys the same question when I did the video about brands I don't buy from anymore. Tons of you guys threw brands at me that I hadn't even considered. So I would love to hear what you have to say on this subject. As always, thank you all my patrons. I am filming this on Monday, April 13th. And after I turn this video off, I have to get my act together because I am doing a live stream with the patrons. We have three live streams scheduled for this week. I'm super excited about each and every one of them. And then we also are going, then I'm also going to put a bonus piece of content over there this month. It was initially gonna go over here on YouTube, but I thought it probably would just be more beneficial and helpful to my patrons. And it is going to be book recommendations. I am a bookworm and I felt like quarantine and self-isolation would be great times to catch up on our reading. So I had some dope recommendations. I put in a video and it's gonna go live on Patreon very soon. And that is not even part of the guaranteed extra two pieces of content they get and the live streams we have coming up as well. As I said before, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Stay safe, stay sane, check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. And I will catch you in the next one.